Let's suppose that we have an equation that looks like this. 2x minus 7 is equal to 13. If I'm looking at a problem like this, I want to get the x by itself. And it's right there. So I need to get, if I want to get the x alone, I need to get rid of anything that's on the same side of the equation as the x. There's a 2 that I'm going to need to get rid of, and there's also a minus 7 that I'm going to need to get rid of. Notice that one of the operations is multiplication and the other is subtraction. Does it matter which number I get rid of first? The answer is absolutely. When we're solving equations, we're undoing things, right? We talked about when there's multiplying, we undo it with division. When there's adding, we undo it with subtraction. Well, when we are trying to get something alone, we are undoing the order of operations. Think about what our order of operations is. We usually use um, the PEMDAS as our little reminder, right? Parentheses, exponents, multiplication and division, addition and subtraction. When we're solving two-step equations, we want to get the x alone. If we're undoing the order of operations, that means we have to start at the weakest link. What's the very last thing that's happening? Following order of operations, x would be multiplied by 2, and then we'd subtract 7. So when we're undoing things, we first have to undo the subtract 7. So we're always going to prioritize getting rid of things that are added and subtracted first. To get rid of a minus 7, we're going to do the opposite. Instead of subtracting 7, we're going to add 7 to each side. Again, as we're going through these, it's critical for you to get credit to make sure you show me what are you doing to each side of the equation and what does that leave you with. In this case, the minus 7 and plus 7 go away, leaving me with just the 2x. And on the right side, I have 13 plus 7, which is 20. To finish getting the x by itself, I'm going to uh, need to get rid of the multiplied by 2. And I can do the opposite operation here, which is dividing by 2. And that gives me x equals 10. Even in a more complicated problem like this, remember the purpose of an equation is to make that uh, statement true. So if 10 is a solution, I should be able to put 10 in for x and still come up with the right answer. So 2 times 10 would give me 20, minus 7 would give me 13, and that does check out. So you can always use this as a backup um, to see if the solution that you got is makes sense or is valid. Let's try a couple others here. Let's suppose that I have negative 7 plus 3x equals 11. In this case, I still want to get the x alone right here. There's a 3 being multiplied and a negative 7 that's being added. So we always get rid of the weakest link first. Um, it's usually actually the thing farthest physically away. Uh, the 3 is touching the x, so that sticks around the longest. The minus, the negative 7 here is farther away, so I'm going to get rid of that first. The negative 7 is being added, so to move it and get rid of it, I'm going to add 7 to each side. Negative 7 plus 7 is 0. That's what I need to make that go away. And then here I'm left with just the 3x. On this side, 11 plus 7 gives me 18 as an answer. And I have a simplified equation, but I'm not all the way done yet. You're never done until the x is all the way alone. Get x alone. In this case, to finish getting the x alone, I'm timesing by 3. So I can divide by 3 on each side. Again, using that fraction bar to mean division. The times 3 divided by 3 divides out, leaves me just with x. And 18 divided by 3 is 6. And again, I found the solution to my equation. Uh, let's see, what about something like this? Let's suppose that we have 14 is equal to x divided by 2 minus 7. Still want to get the x alone. This time it's on the right side of the equation, so I need to get rid of all the values that are on the right side of the equation. Right now, x is being divided by 2 and then subtracting 7. So to get rid of a minus 7, I'm going to need to plus 7 on each side. 14 plus 7 gives me a 21 on the left side. On the right side, I had x divided by 2. Nothing 
has changed with that. The minus 7 plus 7 undoes each other, and I'm left with this simplified version of the equation. To finish getting the x by itself, it's still being divided by 2, so I can times by 2 on each side. And I end up with 42 equals the 2 divided and times cancel each other out and leaves me with x, and 42 is, of course, the answer. Okay, let's take a look at a couple of problems that have some complications that thing, people sometimes forget about. Let's suppose that I have a negative 6 minus 2x equals 8. Okay. In this case, I have a negative 6 out here, and then I'm subtracting 2x to equal 8. I want to get the x alone. The first thing that I want to get rid of is any numbers being added or subtracted. So in this case, notice I've got this negative 6 out here. If I want it to go away, I'm going to need to have to add 6. Again, our purpose is to get this to become irrelevant in my equation. Negative 6 plus 6 is 0, so that drops out. And if I add 6 on the left, I also have to add 6 on the right. This is where people often make a mistake. Once the sixes are gone, there was a subtraction there. What we really need to do is think of this subtraction, right? This is the same, was the same as adding a negative. So what I'm really left behind here isn't 2x. I'm left with negative 2x. So it's important to keep the sign of whatever was in front as you continue through your different operations. In this case, that left us with a minus 2x and negative 2x. On the other side, 8 plus 6 gives me 14. And then I'm almost done, but not quite. The x is not by itself yet. It's being multiplied by a negative 2. So to finish, we're going to divide by a negative 2 on each side. Times negative 2 and dividing by negative 2 leaves me just with an x. And on the other side, 14 divided by negative 2 equals a negative 7. These two-step equations are great. We can always, we always, not always, but we can often simplify even really big equations down so that they just look like one of these, where you have something being multiplied or divided by x, something being added, subtracted by x, and a number. And we're always going to follow the same process. Undo the order of operations, so get rid of addition or subtractions first, and then go and deal with the multiplications as we're undoing everything.